Welcome to Micro Terrors. Scary stories for kids. Where it's always the spooky season. Full of chills. Thrills. And spine tingling spooks. Micro Terrors are family friendly frights for those ages 8 and up. And while our stories are for younger ears, we are still talking about things that go bump in the night, and some children may not be able to handle what others can. Parental consent is recommended. Now, for tonight's Micro Terror. The Haunted Cave, written by author Robert Duncan. Everyone in Castro Valley knew about the mysterious Mercy Cave. Residents had been talking about it ever since the town was founded over a hundred years ago. The older kids said it was made from an earthquake that caused the ground to shift, and they tormented anyone who thought about finding it and going inside, telling them, there'll be another earthquake when you're inside and you'll be trapped forever. Jack Duncan knew this story. He'd heard it many times before from the big kids at school, but he was still curious to experience it for himself, if he could find it. The thing is, no one knew exactly where it was, or if they did, they kept its location secret. If he could at least find it and see it in person, part of the mystery would be solved. "'Take me to the library!' Jack yelled out during an otherwise peaceful breakfast. "'Sure,' said his dad, Robert. "'Anything in particular you want to read?' Old maps of the town, the ones that might have clues about the secret cave, Google doesn't have that," said Jack. Oh, well, finish your breakfast and we'll go. The library was packed on a Saturday morning. While Jack's dad and little brother Arthur were looking at toddler books, the librarian noticed how intently Jack was studying the old surveying maps of the town. Can I help you find anything, young lad? asked the librarian. The librarian tried to keep calm, but when Jack told her he wanted to find Mercy Cave, she clearly got spooked. It was as if a chill went through the whole library. Some other kids nearby looked over in fear, hearing that someone was daring to find the cave. I don't think that's such a good idea. Even if it's real, isn't it haunted? replied the nervous librarian. How about I show you some nice children's books over here? I'm not afraid said Jack. I'm going to bring my flashlight and my little brother when I find it. Jack was clearly going to hold his ground and had no interest in anything besides finding the map with the location of that cave. Jack poured over archived news articles and maps for over an hour, barely blinking an eye the whole time. Then finally, a clue! Handwritten on the side of an old county land survey next to a map of a location only about two miles from his house, noted the words, Beware the old mine shaft. Mine shaft? Jack said aloud. That must be it! Jack made a copy of the page and noted the coordinates with a highlighter. Now it was time to pack and plan out his big adventure. Later that night at the dinner table, Jack profoundly exclaimed, I found the cave, and I'm going to be the first boy to explore it! The haunted cave? cried his mother, Arby. Surely you can't be serious. Ghosts aren't real, said Jack. Besides, I'm going to bring Arthur with me. Jack's father nearly coughed up the water he was drinking after hearing about Jack's plan. <coughs> Your, your brother isn't even three years old yet, Jack. He can't go exploring some spooky, dark cave with you. Later that night, Jack packed his backpack with supplies. A flashlight, extra batteries, granola bars, water, and his stuffed dragon, Buddy, in case he got scared. The thought of being the first kid to find the cave and prove there were no ghosts inside gave him visions of being a living legend in his small town. Too excited to sleep in, at first light he got up and set out on his adventure. His dad was right about leaving his little brother out of it. This is a mission for big kids. 
Jack was only a few steps away from his house when a booming voice made him jump about three feet off the ground. Whoa! Where are you headed so early? It was his goofy old neighbor Joe Sr. Jeez, Joe, you scared me half to death, Jack said. Sorry, buddy, just didn't expect to see you up and about this early. I'm going to Mercy Cave, Jack said proudly. You gotta be kidding me, said Joe. That old mine shaft is haunted and dangerous. Jack stopped in his tracks. Mine shaft? How did you know it was a mine shaft? Shucks, I've been around so long I remember my grandfather telling me about when young men worked inside it, looking for gold and who knows what else. There was a terrible accident about 150 years ago and three miners got trapped inside. All that's left of them now are skeletons. Skeletons? Jack said, trying not to look scared. This was starting to become a bit more spooky than Jack wanted. Well, yeah, said Joe. After 150 years, <laughs> that's all that would be left. Hmm, okay, said Jack. He quickly said goodbye to Joe and pulled out his map, trying not to think about the fact that there could be haunted skeletons lurking inside Mercy Cave. If I hurry, he thought, I can make it there by lunchtime. After some careful navigating and a long hike through valleys and hills, Jack felt confident he was close. He sat down to enjoy his granola bars and water and searched the edge of the valley for something that looked like a cave entrance. What an adventure, Jack thought. He'll be the only person in town to go spelunking at Castro Valley in over 150 years. Now if he could only find the entrance. He sat down on a log to think about where the opening could be and felt a mysterious cool breeze. Funny, Jack thought. It's been nothing but hot and still this whole day. Wait a second. The breeze was coming through that pile of rocks. That's the cave! He quickly pushed some of the rocks out of the way and sure enough, a dark, gaping hole descended into darkness, just steep enough for him to scurry inside without slipping. The cave was chilly and quiet too quiet. Jack turned on his flashlight and waited for his heart to slow down. His breath was a cloud of steam over the flashlight, and Jack rubbed his eyes to help them adjust to the darkness. It was an old mine. There were tracks from a small rail car, old tools and rope. Jack took the rope and tied one end to the rail car and the other around his waist. This way he could follow the rope back when he wanted to leave and make sure he didn't get lost. He explored the various tunnels and passageways with incredible curiosity, so much so that he realized he'd lost track of time. It was so dark in here he had no way of telling how much daylight was left. How long will it take for me to get out of here? What if a wild animal comes looking for me? Suddenly, Jack had a strange feeling that he wasn't alone. Did he hear some whispers and faint rattling? Like the rattling of bones? Distracted by his imagination getting the better of him, Jack tripped on something that felt like a stick and fell to the ground, his flashlight clanging to the ground in front of him. Jack waited for the dust to settle and watched, astonished, as a large skeleton began to appear in front of him. No, he thought, it can't be real. Jack scrambled to his feet and reached for the flashlight, only to find another skeleton and another. Ah! Jack screamed. Three big skeletons with mouths wide open, still wearing what looked like miners' clothes and old headlamps, seemed to be staring right at him. It was time to get out of here. Jack raced through the darkness, careful this time not to trip or bang into anything in this crazy cave. He tried to keep moving back the way he came, but the rope must have gotten caught on something near the skeletons. There was no way he was going back. Jack's heart was pounding and he was starting to sweat. Okay, he thought. I'll just untie myself from the rope and get out of here. He started to untie the rope, but the knot had gotten too tight from him trying to pull away and his fingers were too dusty and slippery to untie it. Jack tried not to panic, but the thought of being trapped in this cave was just too much. Jack yelled for help and heard sounds in the distance. The skeletons, he thought aloud. 
He must have awoken the haunted skeletons, and now they were coming to get him. Help! He yelled again. The sounds were getting louder and louder, and there was nothing Jack could do. He crouched down and tried to hide. Something grabbed him. Jack screamed. Ah! Then it all went dark. Jack must have fainted, because when he awoke, there was a brighter light and he was being carried out of the cave. Where am I? He thought. I am I dead? Did I get turned into a skeleton? Well, you sure had quite the adventure, Jack's dad said. Jack slowly realized what was going on. It wasn't the skeletons who had carried him away. It was his dad. Dad! Jack cried out in a burst of joy. You're lucky Joe told me about where you were going this morning. Your mom and I didn't think you were really going to leave on your own and go looking for Mercy Cave. You've got quite the story to tell now, but I hope you've learned your lesson never to leave on your own, especially out in the middle of nowhere. If I hadn't followed you, you might have ended up just like one of those skeletons. Thank you for listening to Micro Terrors. Join us each Saturday for another scary story. For more fun, visit our website at microterrors.com, where we will also have spooky games you can print out and play, like wicked word searches, mysterious mazes, and more. Microterrors.com is also where you can find us on your favorite social media and even send in your own scary story for us to tell. Plus, you'll learn more about our author, Scott Donnelly, who has other horrors for both young and old. I hope you'll join me again soon for Micro Terrors, Scary Stories for Kids.